Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please, please, read along with me. Please read along with me, word for word and verse by verse. Be a Berean and search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Physically get that book out. Quit making excuses for yourself. And get it. Read along with me. Read along with me. You know what? Because I make mistakes. And my brain will go quicker than my mouth. And vice versa. Uh, I gotta warn you also that it is quite possible, and I know oh, some of you brethren and sisters are very sensitive to this, and I acknowledge this, uh, it is quite possible that you will see mean Brad today. You know why? Because I'm going to be addressing one of the worst types of these disgusting Christians out there, these vomitous, grotesque, Free grace, easy believest scoundrels. These devils who are leading people to hell. Okay? I hate free grace. I hate easy believism. Okay? What it is today, especially, it's, it, it comes from Rome. Okay? So, you might see mean Brad today. Okay? So, let's begin in Matthew chapter 23. And we're just going to read to begin verses 32 and 33. Unto you, fake gracers, and you sleazy, believest scoundrel devils who are leading people to hell with your other Jesus and your other doctrine. May the fires of hell that you so richly deserve burn so hotly under your buttocks, you devils. You vile, vomitous devils. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. And who is the father of uh, easy believism? John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. <coughs> you wicked, wretched devils. Ye serpents! Ye generation of vipers! How can ye escape the damnation of hell. Every single one of you, you fake grace or devils. From Smack Jack to Tom and his two little idiot girls. Okay? Uh, to, uh, uh, to Elmer Fudd in New York. Okay? To all of you. You proponents and teachers of this other Jesus and this false gospel. Fires of hell consume you, you wicked devils. While we're in Matthew chapter 23, let's read verses 13 on to verse 15. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, dispensational difference, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, salvation is not the same in the, dis in the uh, varying dispensations, unlike what these people want you to believe. Okay? But see, these fake gracers aren't saved. They're not going to heaven when they die. And they want you to go to hell with them. So, instruction and in righteousness, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, a shoe, a facade, make long prayer that ye shall receive, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Okay? Better is someone like a Dave Murphy who at least is up front with what his disdain, his despite for the Lord Jesus Christ than you Christians who put on the facade and are worse than they are. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. In verse 24, ye blind guides, which strain in a net, but swallow a camel. Strain at a net and swallow a camel. One of the tactics of the sleazy believists and infiltrators. They will take a certain word, for example, and focus on that one word and base all their lies and uh, false doctrine off of that, straining at the net while swallowing the camel. Okay? And that camel that they are offering you is another Jesus and another gospel. Okay? Sleazy believists, easy believism, dear people, are offering you a Jesus with no requirement. Okay? It's not the Jesus of Scripture. And another gospel. Another gospel. Which has no death to self. Okay? None. Alright? That's what they're offering you. And someone who is living in their sin suit, you Christians, you got the guy who comes around just believe and receive, it gratifies this, your flesh, and yes, you're willing to believe in that. Uh, there is a dude that I came across who, and I'm not talking about the fledgling of pride. I'm not talking about him who goes by JT. Like I said, I'm not talking about that other little devil. I'm not talking about him. Okay, he did whatever, whatever. Um, who, like so many of these people, will point out the absurdity of just believe and receive, the absurdity of it. But then again, a lot of people will uh, focus on actual physical works to justify. They don't get it. But see, even, uh, even like... A atheists and others will point out the absurdity of just believe and receive. You know, and I came across this one guy covered in tattoos, calling himself a life coach. Warning, um, his, his, name, his name is JT. Like I said, I'm not talking about the fledgling of pride, okay? Somebody else with the same initials, okay? Um, and even he pointed that out. And I sent that link on to several of the brethren. I, uh, I don't know if you watched it or not, but... Okay? But see, what is happening? How are these people getting away with this devilment today? It is a partial, like I've told you before, it is a partial fulfillment of Amos chapter 8. Okay? But what, what is happening? Go to Proverbs 19. How are these people getting away with this? Do you realize, dear friend, 30 years ago, my generation, in my lifetime, 30 years ago, the Christians back then, of even 30 years ago, 30 years ago, would look at what is being purported of by these Christians and what is being believed by Christianity today, even 30 years ago, would have looked at this and be like, what the? What? What's happening? What has happened? Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? Oh, uh, uh, Proverbs 19, we're going to look at verse 1 and 3. Okay, and then we're going to follow this train. Okay? 
Isn't it interesting that here in America, most people, you know, with a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their uh, walls, people here in this country consider themselves educated, right? But yet, people of yesteryear are actually more wiser than the ones that are being produced today. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And you evolutionist idiots out there, you think mankind is getting better, that we're more knowledgeable than those of yesteryear. You're crazy! Because evil is good and good is evil, okay? How many genders are there? Okay, sodomite marriage, okay? Pedophilia, and all this nonsense going on. But yet, people are more educated than the ones of yesteryear. What's going on? How are these devils getting away with this nonsense? Proverbs 19, verses 1 out of verse 3. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Perverse in his lips. Just believe in the same. Okay, and there are many other progressions of that variation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm elect. Uh, I belong to Christ's uh, church that he founded. <laughs> okay. Also that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Go after them straightway without thought. See, knowledge comes from wisdom. And there are only two wisdoms today. There, there has own, always been only two wisdoms. The one that uh, descendeth from above and the one that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay, There are two wisdoms. The wisdom of God and the wisdom of the devil, i.e. the wisdom of man. Philosophy, the love of man's wisdom. Okay? There are only two wisdoms. Alright? And knowledge... Knowledge is a, you could say, side effect, if you will, give me a better word, of the wisdom that you are adhering to. Okay? And what wisdom is in these people? What wisdom is in, this, in these people? The one that is earthly, sensual, led by their senses, devilish. I say this because it's all flesh. Okay? The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. And, and, and you know what? While we're here in the Proverbs, you look at Proverbs 28, verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. And easy believism is just that. Just believe and receive. You save yourself by your own belief. Like I've told you so many times, these devil scoundrels, their faith is in their faith, just like the Christian scientists, just like the Pentecostal devils with their uh, name it and claim it nonsense, Okay, that it's exactly the same, just under wearing a different t-shirt. Okay, Isaiah 5, just one verse, Isaiah 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5, verse 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Thirst. Yeah. Christians aren't encouraged to read the scriptures. Okay? They're not. They're not. And when they are encouraged, like with Catholicism, don't read it too much. Because you'll fall into heresy. you got to come to us for it. You know, and that's... that's why there are a multitude of these books on the spiritual life, okay? See, in and of themselves, that's not a bad thing. But what has happened is it's anti-Christ. It's replacing 
Okay? That's why there are so many books out there on the spiritual life. Because, okay, in and of themselves, that's not, it's not a bad thing. But see, the multitude of these books that are coming out are there to replace what isn't there in Christianity. The Lord. Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea is right after the book of Daniel, which I'm going to be reading and get, starting again tomorrow. You need to know that. Hosea 4, verses 6 on to verse 7. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. A knowledge predicated off of true wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and to depart from evil is understanding. But see, the wisdom that is in Christianity and most of the people that we are going to meet, dear brother, sister, is that wisdom, that knowledge based off the off of a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish, of man, philosophy, and vain deceit. Okay? I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Okay? Therefore will I change their glory into shame. Every single one of you sleazy believest devils. And your adherents. Okay? The people that get duped into this horrific sleazy believism are twofold more the child of hell than the one that they heard it from they really are they really really are okay they really are see and the sleazy believers the sleazy believers rejects scriptural the scriptural requirement of brokenness of yourself contrition Okay, fear of the Lord, which we'll see. When the Lord brings you to himself, and you are on that right path, the way, the way of the cross, there's going to be a death of yourself. You're going to be a man or a woman and man up and, uh, and you know, you held the, you held the, namer, the, the, the nail and you had the hammer and you were the one and you put the crown on his head. And it's going to scare the hell out of you. And in that state of brokenness, contrition, and fear, the only thing that is sensible to you is to cry out. But see, see, that's the lesser. We calling upon the greater. But see, what these guys offer you is that you're still the greater because you just flip a switch and there you go. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. People want that. People want that. See, strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Now, Elmer Fudd, the sad, tragic, cancerous Elmer Fudd from New York, a couple years ago, did a video saying the woman's woad was heresy. The woman's woad is heresy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he actually did that. And there are those of you, see, in the devils, they don't like people who can remember these things. Okay? They go crying to Mama Rome, don't you, scoundrel? But one of the things that the sleazy believists and others will do is they will strain at a gnat and swallow the camel. For example, when it comes to Romans chapter 10. See, when the Lord, see, the Lord led me to himself through the book of Romans. Okay? And the book of Romans, especially chapters 1, 2, and 3, are there to show you your need for a Savior and, number, and also that you are not good no matter what you do. You can't. And see, when you got someone who wants to skip over that and say, oh, that's a work, that's a work, blah, 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 just believe and receive. Ah, 
see? But they will fixate on a certain thing, strain it in that, and then swallow the camel as they're offering you another gospel and another Jesus. What am I talking about? In Romans chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 13, okay, it tells you especially that if, that if verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? And by the time you are being led to lead someone on to the Lord, the Lord leading the individual onto himself through the Romans road, which is not heresy, um, and by the time you reach chapter 5, you're going to know what you're dealing with. Okay? You're going to know. All right? But what these guys have done in the past, they will go to Romans 10, 14, and they will do this. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? They'll stop. Say, see, it says believe. It says believe. So it's just believe and receive. And remember, Romans 9, 10, and 11, therefore the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> no, no, see. And, then, and Mr. Fig did that same thing with 2 Thessalonians. That's a satanic tactic to deceive you. Okay? But they'll, they'll go to this and say, See, it says believe, so it's just believe. Strain at a gnat and swallow the camel. And they say, They don't deal with Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? See, it's just believe and receive. And how shall they believe in him of whom they've, they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher now see just reading that verse in and of itself alone tells you it's like okay see they will focus in on the belief just believe just believe while ignoring the context of the very verse itself that wait a second wait a second what is this talking about and how shall they preach except they be sent. Hmm. Preacher. Hmm. See, Romans 10, 14, on to verse 17 specifically, is addressing those of us who are called to do, to preach. Okay? That's what Romans 10, 14, on to verse 17, is actually talking about. It's addressing, it's like, hey, you know, we're all ambassadors for Christ. Yes, but there are different uh, positions within the body, okay? Romans 10, 14 on to verse 17 is specifically addressing those who, of us who have been called to preach the gospel, okay? That's what that's talking about. But see, people's willful ignorance of Scripture, not wanting to know, too being too lazy, wanting to be fed, being awestruck by someone who has a couple, like has a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall, or whatever, or whatever. They're awestruck. They're being lazy. They're being led astray. They come to that. Someone will say that and focus in just on where it says, "See, it says believe." So it's just believe and receive. Uh, read the context. Read the verse for crying out loud. But see, these devils are getting away with this because man doesn't want to know. Man is, man is, you know, being brought along. Man has become lazy in a sense of searching the scriptures daily whether these things be so. How in the, how in the wide world of sports entertainment can these guys get away with such nonsense? Simple. Lack of knowledge. Being taught, ye are your own God. And Christianity is the worst in all of this. That's how these devils are able to get... Because you know what else they do? They go to Acts chapter 16. They go to Acts chapter 16, 
verses 25 on to verse 31. And this is a favorite of them. Okay? And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was an earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners have fled. Now these, and we're going to address this, these stupid sleazy believists will say, that's worldly sorrow, not godly sorrow. He had worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow leads to what? Death. And the wages of sin is death. If this guy had true worldly sorrow, he would have done it. Okay? And we're going to see later in Acts chapter 8 a variation of worldly sorrow in one who was never saved even though the sleazy believe. See, <laughs> these guys strain at a gnat. And you swallow the camel. Okay? They do. Why? Because they know that man today is not searching the scriptures. They know that they're going to be able to get away with this because of the complacency in most of mankind today. In most. Okay? America is extremely guilty in this especially. Okay? But let's continue. See, and the sleazy believers will say, well, that there's, you know, he had worldly sorrow. There, it's, he, there was no repentance there. Like you say, Brett. Yes, there was. Yes, there was. Okay? What a selfish act to kill yourself. Okay? He turned from self unto the Lord. The repentance required for today. Okay? Not going from, uh, and they say, well, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Thou believest, there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay, we, we've addressed that on many occasions. Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, uh, where are we? Okay, verse 28. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now see, the sleazy believers will say he had worldly sorrow, not godly sorrow. It's just believe and receive. The selfish act of willing to kill yourself and the sorrow of the world bring a death. Okay? If this guy had worldly sorrow, he would have succeeded in that selfish selfish act of committing suicide. Okay? He had godly sorrow. He turned from himself. Okay? That's why Paul didn't outwardly say about anything about repentance scripturally because it was already there. Okay? It was already there. Alright? He turned from the selfish act of self of suicide. To the Lord. Don't people don't for one second believe these stupid, idiotic, filthy devils saying that there was no uh, that that was just worldly sorrow, not godly sorrow. Don't fall for that. They're deceiving you. But you want to be deceived, don't you? And they said, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house." Godly sorrow was there in verse 27. Not worldly. If it was worldly, the selfish... You know how selfish suicide actually is? Have you ever thought about that? One of the worst acts of self-gratification. Think about that. This man had godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow. Okay? But see, the thing that these devils have exploited is today especially Christians willful ignorance of scripture whether it's well the oldest and best manuscripts ah the authorized version is the best we got and blah 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 willful ignorance 
pick a Bible that suits you, right? Or they just sit there passively with their uh, with their hands underneath their buttocks and uh, just get fed without searching these things themselves. That's how these guys are getting away with such nonsense. Because as you can, we've we've read this tons of times. You read in Second Timothy, we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved unto God. That we be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we are to study what? Scripture. Okay? Scripture. And see, we... At, well, let's read those. Let's read them. Okay? Let's get it out there. Let's get it out there again. 2 Timothy 2, 15. And on to 16. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, such as sleazy believism, okay, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Brad, you've said the... I know! See, see, you're not being told these things. You're not. And my people love to have it so. And, you know, in, in 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and cor for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And see, someone like these devils straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel will go, it says profitable. It doesn't say needful. You see how this works with these guys? And when you don't want to deal, have yourself deal with, dealt with the way of the cross, you're going to gobble that up to hold on to any vestige of your self-righteousness. So, of course, one of these idiots comes along, just believe and receive. It's like, oh, good, I can hold on to a vestige of myself. And see, in Ephesians chapter 5, just two verses, 26 and 27, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. A result of what? Being in the scripture. Yes, we make mistakes. I've proved that before. But see, that spirit of truth that will lead you and guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Correction will come. Here's where we are supposed to be. Okay? I've seen some of these guys who will, um, these sleazy believists who do like four or five minute videos, they, they, they're milk toast at the best, like that smack a jerk guy. He's milk toast, okay? But what is he banking on? That you people just want a shot in the arm and that's it, okay? Tom and his two little caco demon girls, okay? They just give you all worldliness, okay? That that's just a joke in and of itself, okay? And in First Peter chapter two, First Peter chapter two. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Wherefore, lying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may, that ye may grow thereby. Aha! If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Grow. See, these devils, anyone who gets a hint of the true gospel, the truth, these devils come along and want to keep you in a state of spiritual infancy dependent upon them, not the Lord and the Scripture. Just like what Catholics do. They want to keep you in a state of spiritual infancy dependent upon them, not the Lord or His Word. Okay, we are to be as little children with the Lord. Yes, 
He is our Father. But see, the anti, the replacing that, these devils come along, it's like, no, be dependent on us. That's how these guys are getting away with it. They're playing to your senses, to your sensibilities. Wake up! Grow up! Ay, ay, ay. But see, growth. Growth. How can you be claimed to be saved for 25 years and yet have no idea what rightly dividing the word of truth is? Don't know when the New Testament began. Are adamantly against the redemption of the purchased possession. Just believe and receive, and you've been saved for 25 years. <laughs> and the nuts and bolts things of the fact, nuts and bolts, you don't get, but yet you've been saved for 25 years. In Romans chapter 16, okay, Romans chapter 16, verses 19 on to verse 20. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Am I, yes. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. Simple. If it's against Scripture, then it's evil. If it's against Scripture rightly divided, it's evil. Okay? Brad, you're calling... No. It's evil for someone today to come around and tell you that you got to keep the Ten Commandments to be right with God, stay right with God, and be saved. The commandments are not evil, but to take... Doctrine for another dispensation and try to make it doctrinally salvific for us today. That is evil. That's the evil. Okay? The scripture and doctrine in and of itself is not. But how it's being used to deceive you, that's wherein it lies. Okay? All right? And wise unto that which is good. And how are you going to be wise? Search the scriptures daily. What do these things be so? Study! Study what? The scripture. Okay? Desire the sincere milk of the word to be washed in the water of the word. Okay? But no. You get your little five minutes of fluff or go brainlessly listen to three hours of, a, of an idiot and his two little girls with the horrid attitude and atmosphere of these people coming in and coming and going. Okay? And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, amen. Yes, be wise to that which is good. Wise, wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord that leads on to knowledge that is first peaceable, without hypocrisy, good, full of good fruits. But the wisdom that is of this world is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish, which Christianity is offering you. Okay? But this, uh, okay, and then 2 Corinthians 11, 4. Okay? And see, and here, <laughs> this, we've talked about this so much. You know, we have. We've talked about this. But in 2 Corinthians 4, or uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4, okay? <laughs> verse 4, For if he that cometh preaches preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached or if ye receive another lowercase of spirit which ye have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted ye might well bear with him and see that's what guys like Tom and his two little girls do they allow their horse they allow everyone in and entertain everybody see the devil wants to keep you in a dependence upon flesh. Well, the Lord, yes, you got a, a crawl to walk, but you're dependent on Him through the Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. 
When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Growth. Now, that encompasses more than just spiritual growth. Yes, it does. Because some of you have to grow up. I have to grow up, okay? But see, the Lord doesn't want us to stay here. We ha There is a maturity, a spiritual maturity that we get through our relationship with the Father and that He gr grows us in the Word. But see, these devils want to keep you spiritual babes at the least by being dependent on them. And in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verse 20, one verse, Brethren, be not children in understanding, departing from evil. Mm, be not children in understanding. <laughs> like the sleazy believest. It's okay for you. To, don't worry about it. Just you, Maybe you shouldn't. A lot of them do have that thing. But see, they're, they're, they're all going towards your flesh because your flesh wants to sit there and waste your life away watching Hollywood movies. Your flesh wants to take your little stupid health phone and go up, 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 and the next thing you know, you've wasted five hours of your life. Okay? They, they base everything off of that. All the while, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry, it's okay. You, you, you saved yourself by your belief. It's okay. It's okay. No, it isn't. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Well, I just saved myself, so all things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me, just as if I. Okay? Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Grown up. Grow up. Grow up. God, it's not okay for you to sit there on your duff and waste your life away watching this mindless tripe that's deceiving you. Okay? But see, that's exactly where Satan and his ministers of righteousness want you to stay. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 16. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. See, we don't all have the same office, even though we are all in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. Again, going back to Romans 10, verse 14. Okay? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Perfect as meaning heart, because sinless perfection in this life on earth today is impossible. Okay? Paul missed that. Okay? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. What we're going to be addressing today, I have not personally encountered, okay, about someone going to Acts chapter 8, verse 37, and pulling the same thing as they did with Romans 10, 14, Focus it, uh, uh, straining at a gnat and swallow, swallowing the camel, saying, see, it's just, it's, dude, dude, but let's continue, okay? By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. See, the devils want people so, so childlike in the wrong aspect. Okay? We are to be, we are children of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We are dependent upon Him. Yes, 
Yes, but see, there is a childness, there's a different aspect of that childlike thing that Satan has given you as goo-goo as if you don't know what side of the playpen smells worse. Does that make sense to you? For whom, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And go to first, uh, first excuse me, Colossians 1, 9 on to verse 17. For this cause we also, since the day that we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, which Christians don't have, because if they did, they wouldn't be so easily duped with the simplistic stuff that these devils are getting away with. And what, what's interesting is the Bibles, most of the Bibles do not have Acts 8.37. So here you've got these sleazy believists who claim to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that the authorized version is the perfect word of God. And it is. Okay, even the devils will admit that. But they're still going to Acts 8.37, which is not usually in the uh, Bibles, and still deceiving people by straining at a gnat while you swallow the camel. More on that in a second, okay? That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Those adherents of free grace, easy believism, are not increasing of the knowledge of God, but increasing of the knowledge of self, of how they can justify any devilment. They're increasing in the knowledge of self, not in the knowledge of God. And you watch and listen to, I don't anymore, but, you know, you watch and listen to these devils speak about this. It's all about self. They're not growing in the knowledge of, of God. They're not. Okay? The God of this world, which is, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, Satan. Yes. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long, long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath, who hath, delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now, Acts chapter 8. <laughs> you know, like I said, a dear brother brought this up, and I, and I looked at it, and I'm like, how on earth could anyone fall for something? That's why we went through all that. That's why we went through all that. But Acts 8.37. If you have a Bible like uh, John MacArthur's LSD, uh, this is not in it. Acts 8.37. And Philip said, Thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So see, it's just believe and receive. No repentance. And that's their argument. That brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, which leads to calling on his name, okay, uh, isn't a requirement. That's their argument. They pull that with Acts chapter 16, which we just addressed. And they, okay, and they also, they strain at the gnat and have you swallow the camel like they do with Romans 10, 14, okay? But they say, see, it's just believe, it's just believe. <laughs> In 2 Corinthians 7, 
2 Corinthians 7, okay, verses 9 and 10. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. And how does the sleazy fake gracer um, uh, address this? They say it's a one-sided thing, that it's not a double-edged sword. They say it's a straight-edged razor. And a straight edge has a sharp side, but a blunt side on the other. This is a two-edged sword edged sword. Okay? Verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. And the wages of sin is death. As it says in Romans chapter 6. Okay? So now, the Philippian jailer, the one of the most ultimate acts of self is, life is so hard on me, I am going to kill myself because I can't deal with it. It's the ultimate act of selfishness. Okay? If the Philippian jailer had worldly sorrow, like the sleazy believist will have you believe, then he would have succeeded. Okay? All right? All right? Godly sorrow. Repentance of self. Turning from yourself. Unto God. Okay? Alright? Let's see, the sleazy believer says repentance is going from unbelief to belief. No. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? And you should see their little gymna gymnastics that they try to do to circumvent that. And they, they can't. Okay? But we are going to see this demonstrated in Acts chapter 8. Okay? Worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. Okay? Acts chapter 8 is significant because we see the Ethiopian eunuch. Okay? The Ethiopian eunuch. Also, Acts chapter 8 is significant because it shows us why we get baptized in water as a public profession of an inner conversion. Okay? All right? But this is also significant because in Acts chapter 7, Jewry in its totality, not individually, but as in its totality, rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. A Greek, by the way, is a Gentile. Okay? So, Acts 8 is very significant unto that. But how do we answer these idiots who go to Acts chapter, you know, talk about cherry picking. They go to Acts 8.37 and say, see, it's good, believe and receive. Wait. Wait. How do you answer this? Simple. Acts 8, verses 9 under verse 24. Shimon. And surprise, surprise. The sleazy believe. <laughs> you idiots. You, you devils. They say that this guy was saved because of his belief. But scripture tells us otherwise. Verses 9 on to verse 24. In Acts chapter 8. But there was a certain man called Shimon, which before in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. It was all about himself. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. So this Shimon was all about himself, his position, and his income. Okay? And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Okay? But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, spiritual, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Okay? Now, verse 13. Then Shimon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So Shimon, he believed. Hey, he was even baptized. And the sleazy believers will come to this and say, See, he's once saved, always saved. Uh, where is his brokenness? 
<laughs> Where is it? It's not there. And see, they will go on that, say, see, it's not, it, what you say is repentance isn't required. Yes, it is. But see, they say that this man was saved, and he isn't. He wasn't. Let's keep reading. Because this Shimon has worldly sorrow. But he didn't die. Well, the wages of sin is death. Let's keep reading. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Shimon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. What's his mindset? Is he broken? Is he over himself? Okay, no, he isn't. Does he have that my hand held the hammer and the nail? No. Does he have in him that I put the crown on his head? No. No. It's still all about himself because he sees, oh, look at that. They're putting, and they offer them money, and he offered them money, okay? Saying, give me, I, I, me, 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 I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. See, this Shimon guy lost his position of authority. He lost his income. He lost the bravada. He, you know, he lost everything when the truth came to town. And he saw a way to reclaim it. It's like, hey, give me that so I can do that, so I can get back my position as the head guy, so everyone would love me. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Verse 21. Okay. Again, these sleazy believers, straining at the net while you swallow the camel. They say, then Shimon himself believed. And hey, he was even baptized. So you see, no, he was never saved. Never. Why? Because he was never broken of himself. He had no contrition. And he, sure as Chades, had no fear of the Lord. None. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Why? Because he is his own God. And it was all about him. He has worldly sorrow. He was sorry because his income, because his position, he was demoted. And the sorrow he had was to so he could get it back to exalt himself. The way, and that's sin. The wages of sin is death. Okay? And the sorrow of the world worketh what? Death. See the twofold of that? Repent! Therefore of this thy wickedness. Repent there. So repent is going from unbelief to belief? No. <laughs> the devils also believe and tremble. Okay? No. What is he turning from? Something that he had not himself. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Bitter. Yeah, because he lost his position. Verse 24. This and, you know, that idiot like Smack Jack, who should be smacked upside his head, he'd, he'd say to this, it's like, Shimon was saved. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. See, he's straining at the gnat 
while you guys who aren't searching the scriptures yourselves swallow the camel. Then she and then answered Shimon, proof this man wasn't saved, and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. You do it for me. Spiritual laziness. I don't want to go to the Lord myself. Because maybe he'll put his finger on that one thing I lack. And see, verse 24 also tells us that this Shimon guy, he knew exactly what was going on. Making it worse. Shimon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8 was never a saved man. Do not fall for the lie of the fake grace sleazy believers. Don't fall for it. Then again, hey, you pray for me. You, you read it for me. You expound it for me. So, Shimon the sorcerer had worldly sorrow. Okay? And the sorrow and the wages of sin is death. Okay? And worldly sorrow leads to what? Death. And the world passeth away. Hello? Shimon the sorcerer had worldly sorrow. And what? He didn't die. No. no. Uh, the wages of sin is death. He didn't want to go to the Lord himself. Uh, someone who is genuinely saved, when we get rebuked, we're going to the Lord right away. See, we have that relationship with him. This Shimon the sorcerer dude, he was never a saved man. Never. Never. And hey, yeah, you're right, sleazy believers. <laughs> Where was his repentance? It wasn't there. It wasn't there. If anything... This Shimon the Sorcerer is a good um, accusation against every one of you easy believists. Because you just believe and receive, but yet you're not saved. None of you are. None of you easy believist devils are saved. Not one of you. Not one of you. And uh, those twofold ch children of hell... Okay? But now, the Ethiopian eunuch. And what's their argument? That repentance wasn't there. That a brokenness, contrition. Okay? Calling upon the name of the Lord. Okay? Which is a requirement for us today. Okay? But see, their thing about, the, uh, about this, about their Acts 8.37, is that there is no broken and that's that's what they hate the most that's why they follow the uh, establishment commandments the Richlingite doctrine of where they go to us after Romans 3 uh, uh, 18 basically okay with that devil's uh, nonsense okay <laughs> all right but it's like well hey he just believed and received inferring like like they try to do with the Philippian jailer that scriptural repentance or brokenness wasn't there. That is scriptural repentance, brokenness, and contrition. Okay? Acts 8, verses 30 on to verse 38. And Philip ran thither to him. Uh, actually, actually, let's read... Um, Let's read verses 27 on to verse 38, okay? And he rose and went, uh, went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. So this Ethiopian guy was reading scripture. Okay. 
number one, okay? Shimon the sorcerer, it was all about him, okay? When the Lord saved me, he saved me through the uh, uh, book of Romans, okay? Then the capitalist spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb before, and like a lamb dumb, being unable to speak, before his shears, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. When led to the Lord by the, through the book of Romans, reading Romans 1, 2, and 3, that there is none good, no, not one, okay, you learn, number one, that you can't save yourself. There's nothing you can do. You're up the creek, okay? Today, keeping the law, going to the law, is futile, okay? Because the perfect sacrifice for sin has already been made, okay? There ain't anything that you can do, according to the law or anything, to make it better, okay? And when you read in Romans, especially chapters 1, 2, and 3, you, you learn that, hey, it's your fault that Christ died. You were the one who held the nail, held the hammer, and put the crown of thorns on his head. Okay? You learn, you figure it out quickly that, wow, I'm in a lot of trouble. And I could, I could try to do what the law says, and then you figure out, it's like, well, if you offend at one point, then you've broken it all. That's not going to work. So what do I do? What shall I do? Oh, just believe and receive. Huh? See, you need to be broken of your self-righteousness. And that's what these guys avoid. And they avoid you taking personal accountability that your hand held the nail and the hammer. And they have it so you can hide conveniently. Well, we're all sinners. But with every single solitary one of these sleazy believers, every single one, without an exception, and you can lightly scratch them and it comes out, well, I'm better than so-and-so. Lack of brokenness of self. And see, the significance of... I, the Ethiopian eunuch was reading this. And see, when the Lord leads you to himself through the book of Romans, and then you come to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And before we read Isaiah 53, let's read verse uh, Isaiah 52, verses 13 on to verse 15. See, your sin put Christ on the cross. No, you didn't ask for him to do it, to die for you. No, you didn't. But he did it anyway. Okay? All right? It's your fault. There ain't nothing you can do. You're not a good person. Your best works altogether are vanity. You can't keep the law perfectly. You, you keep it in one point and you break it in the other. You mess the whole thing up. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. It's hopeless for you. There's no hope for you except the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled 
and be very high. As many as many were astonished at thee, his visage, visage, face, was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. They tore out his beard. He was beaten horrifically. The face of the Lord Jesus Christ during uh, before going to the crucifixion, he was beaten where his face didn't even resemble that of a man. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Ah! See, the Christ of the Scriptures, someone who is self-righteous, there's no beauty there. But see, someone who has been broken of their self-righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is the most beautiful that you could ever see. But see, Someone who skips over scriptural repentance, contrition, fear of the Lord. Just believe and receive. Yea, hath God said. See, straighter than that, and you swallow the chem. The actual Christ of the scriptures, rightly divided. Someone who is self righteous. There's no. He hath no form nor comeliness. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. And the Ethiopian eunuch reading that, okay, how can someone who is seeking the Lord how can you not read? The, and you got to remember, at this time in Acts chapter 8, there was no Romans road yet. Someone who is genuinely seeking the Lord, you, you read Isaiah 53. That breaks a man. And see, someone like Shimon the sorcerer, they come to uh, Isaiah 53 and the Hebraic Jewish people in the synagogues avoid Isaiah 53. Isn't that interesting? And if they don't, they try to encompass that it is Israel in itself as the state, as the nation, not Jesus Christ. That's how they get around that. See, a self-righteous individual, when they come to Isaiah 53, it... It's foolishness to them. Or they pass it off into some other thing. But see, the Ethiopian eunuch, reading Isaiah 53, brokenness of self was obviously there. But let's, let's read Isaiah, let's finish Isaiah 53. Okay? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one uh, to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And note how this is structured in Isaiah 53. The Ethiopian eunuch was quoting this. 
He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. What came before verse 7? All we like sheep have gone astray. There is none good. No, not one. Brokenness of self in Isaiah 53. It's right there. The Ethiopian eunuch was broken of self. You wicked devil. It's right there. Because, because the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shears, not speaking. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. But see. You people, lazy. You don't want to search the scriptures. You don't want to study. You're willing to sit there scrolling on your YouTube thing and have some individual give you a shot in the arm. That's how they're getting away with it, brother. That's how they're getting, that's how they're getting away with it. 30 years ago, 30 years ago in my generation, a Christian would at least have been like, oh, wait a second, dude. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. There's more to it than this. But no, the disposable complacency. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, just like the crucifixion, okay? And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Uh, who is on the cross? The significance of the cross will be for you in the description box. Watch it. Just watch those videos. We go through that. A more in depth. Okay, now go back to Acts chapter 8. Now, we just looked at it. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading verses uh, 7 and 8 in Isaiah 53. Yes, at that time there were no verse numbers, okay? But see, see, screening it in that, you swallowing the camel. What came before that lends itself onto brokenness and contrition in fear of the Lord. In Isaiah 53. Okay? So, the Ethiopian eunuch, coming back from Jerusalem, reading Isaiah 53, and he got past the part, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And the most despised. I didn't hate you. I despise you. You go to hell. Okay. The most despised portion of scripture to the sleazy believest. Romans 3. As it is written. Verses 10 on verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Not one. 
including you. They are all <laughs> gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God. Verse 34 in Acts chapter 8. And the eunuch answered Philip. I misspelled eunuch, obviously, brother, sorry. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? Who, who is he talking about? Who? Himself or some? Obviously. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The Ethiopian eunuch in reading Isaiah 53 in Isaiah 53 verse 6 got to that part where we are all gone, everyone's gone, it's, it's brokenness. Okay, Isaiah 53. Okay. Ethiopian eunuch had scriptural repentance and contrition and fear of the Lord. Obviously. Obviously. Okay? Did he call on the name of the Lord? And as they went on their way, they came onto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? It's like, look, uh, okay, Look, yeah, I've read Isaiah 53. I, I see. It's like, oh boy, I'm in trouble. And you told me the, the only one who can save me from my predicament. I can't, but the only one who can is Jesus Christ. I want, I want some of this. It's like, hey, there's water. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Called on the name of the Lord right there. Right there. It's right there. See, the Ethiopian eunuch had what Shimon the sorcerer didn't. He read the scripture. The scripture in Isaiah 53 broke him of his self-righteousness. He had, it's like, what, 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 what do I do? Philip preaches unto him Jesus using the same scripture. And the Ethiopian eunuch says, I, 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 Okay, okay, let, let, me, let, let me declare publicly, everyone, uh, I believe on Lord Jesus Christ, what do I do? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's right there, man. Dude, it's right there. Okay? His belief came, predicated was what? Brokenness and reading the scripture in Isaiah 53. Okay? We already looked at it. Okay? Brokenness was there. Scriptural repentance was there in the Ethiopian eunuch. Oh, and by the way, Ethiopian eunuch Guess what? He was a Hamite. He was black. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, pal. Okay? All right? Scriptural repentance was there in the Ethiopian eunuch, just like it was in the Philippian jailer, who these devils lie to you and say that it isn't there. They're deceiving you so that you think that you can save yourself, that you are your own God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. It's simple. 
It's simple. Scriptural repentance, brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord. And hey, I believe that's a profession of faith from someone who came to the Lord the way of the cross, broken of himself, by reading about in Isaiah 53. And yes, Paul hadn't even been saved yet. And the, the, the dear brother who, it's like, well, how do you answer this? And I, I gave him the short version, but I want, you know, going through the scripture, it's like, you see this. But see, we have to understand. 30 years ago, 30 years ago, a Christian would have been like, whoa, 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 time out, dude, time out. Okay, there's more to it than this. But see, today, especially in an American society like this, uh, just any, any semblance of religiosity will suffice. And then they go on their merry way uh, as they're going right off of a cliff and you got the sleazy believers hey, 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 cheering them on while pissing on their back. So that is going to be it for this video. <laughs> it's, 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 it's full of wonder how these people are falling for these things that you and I as saints were like, well, wait a minute, dude, what? What are you talking about? But see, our enemies know that people don't want to read the scriptures. They say, boy. And they know that their father, the devil, has wrought so much confusion. Even so... Come, Lord Jesus. So that's that's gonna be it for this video. Um, thank you, brother. By the way, for this. Uh, excuse me for the for putting this uh, out there. <laughs> okay. So that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, um, please, please, brethren, do keep us in your prayers. Things are not good around here. But there is only one good. And that is the Lord. So please keep us in your prayers. Anyway, I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you. We love you. See you in the next video if there is one.